Time to play with some play. There's very little beating on uh, these uh, crow legs, leggings. Uh, there's some down here kind of blocking in the bottom part of the uh, legging or the leg of the pants, but uh, nothing really elaborate on uh, the sides here. It's rather simple. I'm imagining these would be made out of a uh, light trade cloth. Anybody who uh, knows the area around Billings, Montana, that's uh, that was Crow territory at one time. And uh, the bluffs above Billings uh, would have made a perfect place to watch over a village. And that's what this gentleman is doing. The storyline is, and somebody asked me about it the other day, what is the story behind this? And uh, the story is this gentleman has uh, been sitting the night shift, you might say, on a mountainside, on a, a bluff uh, above the village. And the bluffs over the village or over the valley in the uh, uh, Billings area are rocky, just like this. And I can imagine him sitting there through the night, and even though it might be summer, anybody who knows anything about Montana and summer knows that it can get mighty cold at night. And so he's got his blanket uh, around his shoulders and just keeping himself warm as he sits here at the base of this rock. What he's uh, jumping up for is the fact that he's seen a glint of metal reflected in the morning sun off in the distance. And that's not a good thing. And uh, so he's uh, coming to alert. I'm going to have to figure out a title for this piece. and It's not going to be called Coming to Alert. It's, that's awkward and probably bad English anyway. All right, I've removed the uh, bow and quiver from uh, the figure. And I'm just working out the shirt below the quiver um, is something I have to do. Now he's pulling the, the quiver up against his chest and what I'm trying to do here is imagine what that would do with the shirt. The shirt would be made of a brain tanned skin which would be light in 
texture and weight. Uh, if you've never seen brain tanned leather or felt it or uh, experienced it, you have no clue what I'm talking about. Uh, it was like fine felt. That's how uh, incredibly soft brain tanned leather was. It was, uh, they call it brain tan because it would uh, be used, the, the animal's brains would be used in the uh, tanning process of the, the leather for the shirt. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, they would, it, it, it's, a, it's kind of a strange thing, but every animal has just enough brains <laughs> in its skull to uh, tan its own hide. And uh, that's just the way it is. Buffalo hides were brain tanned and if you ever find a buffalo skull out, out in the prairie that uh, has a hole smashed into the, the uh, brain pan of the uh, skull in the front, you found a Native American killed buffalo because that was a good indication that uh, it was killed by a Native American because they, they would uh, take the brains and uh, tan the hide for that uh, animal. Now, I have a, a family up in Browning, Montana, where the uh, Blackfoot tribe is located. That's north of here, about uh, maybe 200 miles. And uh, their family name is Yellow Kidney. And I asked uh, a gentleman of the tribe who was showing me a shield he had made with a buffalo on the shield and a line going from the mouth of the buffalo down to its heart or down to its kidney I should say and it was yellow and I asked him what the significance of that was and he told me that he, when the uh, Blackfeet killed buffalo they would check the kidney if it was a yellow kidney, if it was yellow, it meant the meat was going to be good. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And his family's name is uh, Yellow Kidney. There's a, if you look up Yellow Kidney on Google, you'll find one of their great great grandfather whose name was that. Yeah, this is the only way I could have worked on this uh, shirt is by removing the uh, bow quiver. All right, this is where I'm going to end the video today because this took me longer to do than I thought it was going to take me. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm adding, let's see if I got a picture of it, yeah I did. I'm adding this flap here on the shirt. And uh, there's no border on the uh, shirt itself. The shirt is just a skin, but it's uh, getting late in the evening and I spent two hours on this. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's exactly how long it took me to reproduce this uh, beaded flap. I need to have the beads even, I need to have them a certain number, and I need to have it squared. And to get all that 
done properly. I just it took me long more longer than I thought it was gonna take me. This will just add a little design to the shirt and some color. And uh it's always a good thing. I'm uh filling in behind the uh flaps so that it'll be easy to cast. And to seal it in. I'm having it lifted away from his shirt just to give it some three dimension. All right, that's going to be it for tonight. Wasn't much on this video. I'm sorry. That's just the way it works out sometimes. Good night, everybody. And uh, if you're interest, interested in being uh, a sculptor at some point in the future, uh, and you want to uh, take advantage of my over 50 years of uh, doing this, uh, you can check out my instructional DVDs in the link below this video. There's a uh, link to a page where I show all nine of my VD DVDs and a brief video on what's on each DVD. Maybe it might make a good Christmas gift for somebody or for yourself, for that matter. All right, good night, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow with my warrior, the Sentry. Hmm, going to have to think about that title. Good night. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.